Welcome to Rewind, the podcast. Girl, I have a question. (laughs) I have a question for you. Okay. How are you doing? <laughs> Great. I really don't have a question. Great. I actually want to know, have you seen the announcement for the new Traders? Yes. Okay. Do you watch Traders? Okay. So I'm regularly on my bullshit. Mm-hmm. I don't be watching shows, but, but I you be keep watching up. shows. But you keep I up. I keep up. So like last season, I was living for Phaedra. Okay. Um, I could not stand Trishelle. Yeah, even, I couldn't stand her on the real world. Me either. Yeah. So I'm like, I didn't watch, watch, but I like, I watched. Mm-hmm. Nothing like a little white girl who's like, I know what I'm doing. And the finale was so good. Like all of the podcasts that mm-hmm. I follow, Peppermint. like follow it. Mm-hmm. And so I, that's how I was getting all the tea, but I wasn't actually watching. But do you think we should watch? Oh, I I was, it's not even a do you think. I saw the cast list. Yeah. For the next season, we will be watching. Okay, are we going to review? I, are we going to review for the pod? Even if uh, I come prepared and you don't or vice versa. <laughs> we found our show. <laughs> we found it. <laughs> January no. 2025. Now watch. It's going to be crap. It's, it's going to be, be like, like the, the worst, worst season, season ever. <laughs> but okay, so I want to talk about who's on there. Okay, because cool. that's what made me want to watch. Okay, so, well, let's start here. Okay. What is like the premise of traitors do we know so from what i've gathered mm-hmm. without knowing nothing about anything okay that it's like people from reality tv mostly who come mm-hmm. on this show Trying and stay employed yeah and there are traitors amongst the group okay and they have to vote on who's a like loyal and who's a traitor okay but it's very much mind games at some point like someone dies i think it's very murder mystery oh i think i would actually really like yeah, that it's i very love a murder, murder mystery, mystery. Have you ever been to a murder mystery party? Someone's the killer. You gotta figure it out. Okay. I know what a murder mystery party is. I'm trying to think. Raven's like, I've been to an actual murder. (laughs) (laughs) No, I I did it. say yes, but like, you know, my memories be... Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you can even fall and hit your head this week at work. (laughs) (laughs) My memories be off. Uh, I feel like I have, but I don't know if I've just like in my head been to one, but not really. I've been to two and I really loved it. I always win best performance. Because I take it so seriously. Um, but I never get the killer right. Because <laughs> oh. I'm so invested in the performance. I'm like, she did it. And they're like, no, it was actually him. And I'm like, oh, I okay. I like, have vague <laughs> memories of doing one. But yeah. I can't like pinpoint the experience. Go back. Do you, did you have a flapper dress on? No, it wasn't that deep. There's always like, it's always in the you 20s. You know why I get it mixed up? Why? Because I get it mixed up with that game that we used to play. Do you remember? Where you had to like sneak and yell at each other. The first time I ever met you, we played this game. Oh, the werewolf the game? The werewolf game. Oh, my gosh. One Night Ultimate Werewolf. That's the official title. Is it really? Yeah. They're dramatic. The first time we ever met Raven. If you've never played that game before, it's, it's so, so fun. Fun. Literally, probably traitors in your friend's form. Literally, it was the best time. I So, it was the first night I ever met Raven. She came over to our house, and you spend this whole game, if you are a werewolf, convincing people you're not a werewolf. Mm-hmm. And she was a werewolf? Yes. And it was I? No. But you... Oh, I cheated! Cheated! Yes! So the <laughs> Sometimes you the gotta game, get ahead by yourself. You're, you're sitting in a circle, and then, like, one person can... You have to, like, raise your hand or something, like, on yeah. who's of this and who's of that. There's like, one everybody person... closes their eyes and goes, werewolves, open your eyes. Yeah, and there's one person who, like, sees everything, right? Yeah. Well, you're supposed to have your eyes closed. Blake cheated, <laughs> and in the round was like... Okay, y'all, I cheated. I opened my eyes. I know she's a werewolf. And I've never seen Raven go as quick to... I was like, you're a liar. I was like, who believes... You're already proven you're a cheater, if that's true. (laughs) So now you're a cheater and a liar. We literally known each other for 30 minutes, and we were all screaming Screaming at at each each other. other. (laughs) So I don't know why we haven't been watching Traders. Uh, That's true. But... um, but I think she was able to convince people she wasn't the werewolf, yeah, and she was. I lie. I wasn't great on it. I lying, but <laughs> <laughs> I did lie that day. Um. So anyway, okay. So okay. is there who's on who on the list where you like? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. The mo- the person I'm most excited for is Brittany. Who she, the was, is that? she was. She was. <laughs> who is that? She was on Big Brother. Oh, I don't watch that. Oh, uh, so I watched it like in like 2009 to like 2012. Okay. Ate it up. Wanted to be on it. My brother tried out for it. He didn't make it. Oh. Story of our family's <laughs> life. <laughs> um, not forever, though. Uh, but 
she was on there so funny, so dry, so like over it, like didn't want to like, almost like I don't want to be on this, but like I'm here. And that humor translated so well. Mm. Like she was part of this alliance called the Quack Packers because it was led by like a nerdy like guy who ended up winning the show. And I just remember her interview. She was like, I guess I'm proud to be like a Quack Packer. I can't believe I just said that. That's embarrassing. Like just like so over it, but like very in it. And I can tell she's going to be very funny. Okay. She's very confrontational. I'm interested to see Britney Spears' ex-husband. What's mm-hmm. his name? Sam. Sam. S- uh, I think we already know who's going to be a traitor because he's doing it well in his real life. Well, we don't know him. We don't know her. So, And we don't know. But from what it appears to be from the outside. Looking in. Looking in. How politically correct. It <laughs> looks as if he might have been a plant. For Britney's people. I've always said that. I never trusted him from day one. Mm-mm. The moment she married him, I was like, I don't no. trust him. Because my whole thing, not to make this a Britney Spears podcast for a minute, but my whole thing was Sam was, so no one can get close to her, but you can. T. Make that make sense. Make it make sense. Also, the boy looks gayer than Peter Pan in a pair of ice skates. That's true. I'm like, come on. Although you look you like you are a headless tell torso. someone's gonna... sexuality by how they Girl, look. Girl, I'm the gay one here. Don't be doing all that, okay? <laughs> you can't tell someone's sexuality by how they look. Yeah, but when they go, hey, I'm like, queen. Except for I clocked Blake 30 seconds in. Mm-hmm. I said, ooh, he I like said, boys. She goes, I'm a werewolf and he's a homo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> I think I'm recovering just you fine. You weren't even out then. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know. I wasn't. No. Oh my gosh, talk about the ultimate I traitor. I went to our mutual friend who introduced us and I was like, that oh. boy a little fruity. I said, oh, he's, he's like a little, he's gay, right? And he was like, no. And I said, Mm. He he gay. He Raven don't know said it. Raven looked at the camera that was not there at that time and she said, I be knowing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I never trusted Sam. Okay. I also feel like he I don't know. I think the traitors like change as the game goes on. Yeah, I think it's like an in and out because I remember yeah. would see something about like because I, I would Oh, I remember. Tell me. So they would okay, say like they would vote, 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 vote. Like, okay, so we're all in a group and I okay. say Blake's a traitor. Everyone says Blake's a traitor. You'll stand up and then you'll be like, I am a traitor. And then everybody'll be like, Woo! Or you'd be like, I'm not a traitor. And then you have to still now you've gotten rid of a good person. So you can get voted off the you game. You get voted off. Okay. Because what, what's the ultimate? If they get rid of all the traders, they win money? Yes. Oh, okay. 250000 250000 bones? Oh, can you go on there but as like a reality show cast off since you were on I Know You F***ing Lying? I don't, I don't think I'm on game. I was on a game show. You would, would you do it though? Oh, 100%. <laughs> I love the shows where you drink and eat food and there's no like real activities. Yeah. I think they have to do like little challenges. Uh, I saw the trailer for season one. They were in a snake pit. Okay, yeah, no. I'm not okay. going on that. I was going to say, they were like, head was in there, spiders crawling over Oh, them. hell no, I ain't going <laughs> on that. Are you crazy? Do you have to do it if you're a traitor? You have to, everyone has to protest. Every, oh, ever to protest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love a protest. Yes. Oh. And I can't, I'm more of like, my dream of life was always to be on the real world. I'm definitely more of a real world girl than a road rules girl. Where you live in a house with a rock wall and work at a tanning salon. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> and you go out every night yeah. and like, that's it. That's <laughs> like it. That's the show you fight with people. That's yeah. like my dream. I was watching uh, the, so after every episode of Drag Race, they do this thing called the Pit Stop where a uh, drag queen interviews another drag queen about the episode. And one was like, I love being on this game. She goes, a lot of people want to do this nice stuff. And she goes, half the competition is not even the competition. It's the mind games you play with people in between. And I was like, that reminds me of Raven. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you would go on one of those shows. And even though the competition's over, you're like, well, I know I'm going to be on next week. So I got to get a leg up next week. So you'd be like, are you sure you did? well like no cameras no mics you just be oh, in yeah, the bed for sure you'd be like are you sure you did that good that i think the producers are are messing with you knowing full well they're not yeah yeah cast me on your next reality <laughs> yeah. just don't make it trivia based <laughs> um okay so sam bridget okay so there's a lot of um there's a lot of I kinda, real housewives I'm, that's what i my people yeah. dorenda I'm yeah. excited about. I saw an article that said she's about to be reality TV gold. Okay, this is the thing with Dorinda. Okay. She's nuts. Like, cuckoo. 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 Okay, I haven't been keeping. So they've re- completely revamped uh, New York. So she's not in New York. Like, uh, she's not actually a housewife anymore. But those women would be like strung out on pills and booze, and they would pee their pants and shit on people's beds. 
and like act like a f- complete Looney Tunes. Sounds like me last night. Oh. <laughs> so like they are TV gold. I don't know what the vibe is of traders. I don't know how much they're drinking. Cause I feel like Dorendo, when she has a few cocktails, she's she's ready, she's to, ready to play. Okay. So I'm excited about her. Oh, Sierra Miller. She had a huge um, moment on Summer House. I was gonna say she's from Summer House. Yeah, black girl, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, real cute. She's she's like the it girl right now because of the whole situation on Summer House. I do not watch Summer House, but I keep up. I love that our tagline is pop culture moments from today and back in the day. And we're like, we keep up. We do keep up. We keep I just, up. I work a full time job. I can't watch ninety six TV shows. That's so true. Like absolutely. And then not. what's starting now? Love Island. Is that already started? I don't know. That's like eight episodes a week. I know. I can't do that. I, I had a friend who watched it, and literally every night I was like, "What you? What are you doing?" She's like watching Love Island. I was like, "How long is the episode?" She was like, "No, it's like every night." And I was like, "Oh, I can't." Yeah, do that. I can't do that. And I wasn't doing nothing back then no, either. <laughs> that was the like COVID joke. times. Yeah. Um. Okay. The one I'm really excited about is Tom Sandoval. Okay. Can I? Can I say this? Having not watched anything about Vanderpump Rules or anything about Traders, but knowing how this guy acts. But you've watched Vanderpump. I keep up. You keep up. I feel like this man is going to play a horrible game. It could go either way. I don't need him going on his redemption tour. I want the world to continue hating Tom Sandoval. Okay. I don't need him to go on here and be like, oh my gosh, he's really a nice guy. And like everyone doing that crap. Mm-hmm. Like I, if he's going to be the villain, I need him to be the villain. I need he's us to be, be done. Yeah. Because I will be pissed if this turns into some like redemption arc for him. Um, Because that's kind of low key what it was for Phaedra. The last time we saw Phaedra on reality TV, she had made up a rumor that Candy was trying to drug Portia and rape her. So through um, Traders, Mm -hmm. she had a redemption. Redemption, yes. Okay. And now they're talking about like she's coming back to stuff. She's on Married to Medicine, I believe, like as a friend. Like she's making her reality TV come back. She's the exposition friend now. Seriously. (laughs) I love that. Um, Let me see if there's anybody else. Okay. Like Dylan Efron, I don't care. I'm excited for Bob the Drag Queen. Bob the Drag Queen is very like blunt. I'll tell you what's up. Um, You know, last year because of Trishel, she gave Peppermint the runaround. Mm -hmm. And remember, there was that whole moment at the end where Peppermint basically got to have her speech. Bob's not doing that. If if someone wants to come for Bob, Bob's going to handle it right there. And I'm not saying that's a sign of weakness on Peppermint's thing. Bob's just, she just doesn't play like that. And I'm excited for that. But if Bob's a... Traitor, then that that maybe not work doesn't work for the game. You just have to wait till you see. I well, I don't know how gonna, the game works, so I'm, I'm, say, like, I'm gonna tell you what's up. See people's personalities kind of shift a little bit depending on where they are in the game. And the fun part is we know who everyone is, obviously, but yeah. they don't know each other. I think I need to catch up and watch yeah. season one and two. See, that's what I love too. I love a season that I can. Yeah. Um, I'm also excited to see Robin Dixon. She's on Real Housewives of, Real Housewives of Potomac. Okay. Um, she always brings the drama. I think this is going to be a really good cast. I think so, too. And I think we are going to have some fun watching it. You know what we should do? We should watch it, um, like, every week together with popcorn and wine, which reminds me, I have something to show you. Gabe, we have a stand-in producer today. Gabe, will you go to that cabinet up there? So do you remember a couple weeks oh ago? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm so do you remember a couple weeks ago when we were doing the whole like we try to take black box into the theater yes, you and have I got to the help big our wine producer here where the little bowl is above the Barbie cup? So do you remember when we got black box wine a couple weeks ago? Yes. So they actually reached out. So black box sent us these wine glasses, and in the note they were like, uh, "For the next time, y'all go to the theater and you need something to pour it into," <laughs> <laughs> because they said you. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Thank you, Black Thank Box. Thank you, Black Box. No, seriously, though, because that's the thing about sneaking wine into the movie theater. You got to take a cup, too. Every Without fail, we get in there, we sit down, we're in our seats, we got our popcorn mm-hmm. and our candies in our Black Box, and we're like, I guess we're going to drink it out of our You got to slap the bag. Nobody yeah. can remember to bring cups. Literally. Thank and you so much. What's also funny, too, is... Um, they not funny, but they've got this little thing for the finger. I know. So you'll drink red and I'll drink white and we'll go to the movies. Yay, thank yes. you again, Black Box. Oh my gosh. Okay, real quick. Did you see that we're getting a new Hunger Games? No. Are you you're a Hunger Games girly, right? Sure. Did you read the books? Yes. Okay, so all I had to remember. Okay. So they announced a new one because you know, in the Catching Fire, it's revealed that Hamish like was in a quarter quell. But I no, I'm you actually excited. Is talking a different language. <laughs> what is a quarter quell? That's what she was in when they were in the clock arena and they like do something a little Wait, extra. Is this the same no, this this the one with um 
Yeah. What do you think I'm talking about? Like Divergent? Yes. Oh, no. That's See, what I be That movie up. didn't even get filmed like all the way to completion. That's what I be mixing up. No, okay. it's Katniss. Uh, uh, okay, okay, Jennifer okay. Lawrence with the smoky eye. Yeah. I remember. Okay. And then they just redid the other one with um the little girl who's saying, oh, yeah. Oh, and then this why does Snow White have to be rescued? That was her whole PR scam, which was not really a scam. All that to say. What's up? No, go ahead. No, no, you can't do that and then say, go ahead, go. No, no, no. No, we'll wait. No, I'm done. Rachel Ziegler. Ziegler. Oh. Yeah, she was in um, uh, I Feel Pretty. Oh, So Pretty. West Side Story. Took me a second. Loved that. But I got there. Anyways, so they're doing a new movie and a new book. Well, book, then a movie. And it's based on Haymitch. The guy who trained Katniss, who was mm-hmm. the drunk, but mm-hmm. remember in the second book, he saved his girlfriend mm-hmm. and like basically got President Snow, and so he killed his girlfriend in front of him. Mm. All that to say, so the book is going to be about that, and I'm very excited. And we'll be having our black box wine and all of that. I love that. <laughs> you are so glassed over in the eyes. You do not know I anything. Do not care. I love it. Okay, well then let's just move on. Okay. Moving on along. Moving on along. Moving okay, along. so we have. We are featuring mm-hmm. another artist. Yes. Who um was It's the- time for Undiscovered. That's not the official theme song. It's not the theme song, but it's the official title. Um, <laughs> we uh, had a bunch of submissions, and yeah. we decided to pick a new artist for this week. We did. And his name is Anthony Chula. Yes. Ooh. Which, total honesty and Fort Rith, we know him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But I will say, for y'all, if you hear that and you're like, oh, this is a scam, blah, 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 blah. He literally submitted yeah. like everyone else. I for can sure. show you the email. I'm not going to right now because yeah, we're on a time crunch. But literally submitted his songs like everyone else we're not gonna say like thank you for the songs we're just gonna let you know when we're doing it yeah 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 so i gave him a call and let him know that he would be featured this week he was super Mm -hmm. excited Um, he started sobbing uncontrollably i was like that's a a little dramatic (laughs) but a little bit about anthony i lovingly like to call him anthony marie chula but that's not his real middle name true um he is from birmingham alabama um he has been doing music a long time, his whole life, singing in choirs. He's Show- a homo. Okay. <laughs> it's Pride Month. Queer music. Elevate queer music, girl. For sure. Um, singing in show choirs. Went to the University of Alabama. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has put out an EP, I think in 2019. Mm-hmm. Sunset Drive. Called Sunset Drive. And then he's released some singles since then. Just some little sprinkling. Yeah. So we decided that we're going to do our game that we always do. We're yeah. going to do our top three and we're going to do our throw away which and, this will be kind of fun because uh he's a close friend and now we get to tell him what song we would throw away. and also fun fact i do have to disclose that on sunset drive i was one of the people on the background vocals uh-uh yeah. which one um meant for <laughs> you, you said i knew you were gonna ask that <laughs> meant for you good and oh is that why that that tuning sounded a little off yeah okay got it love that you're a whore is it never say forever? Never say forever. I can't either. That sounds like a that sounds like a really action packed movie starring like John Cena, coming this July. Never, never say, say forever. forever. Also crazy? starring Jason Momoa. Maybe crazy. She was on the record, everybody. Okay, <laughs> I guess Jeff she was Michael, she was laying did, down some tracks. No, I just did gang vocals. Okay, nice. So, but so you weren't doing like like laying down tracks. No, he wasn't like woo woo, and you were like woo woo. Yeah, I was doing that. No, but like like we do. Yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> so, um, well, I have another fun fact, but I'll wait until we get to the song part. So let's start with this. Now he's going to make it about himself because I had one moment. Yeah, literally. Okay. Go ahead and tell <laughs> us. So we're, we're going to do our top three in our throwaway. So I'll start. Ladies first. Um, oh. You can go first okay. also because it's almost Juneteenth. So. You are dumb. <laughs> let's go. Okay. Your My third. You're number three. Number three. Oh, this is hard for me. So my number three was released in 2022, and it's called Missing a Stranger. Okay. So he'd come out with a few songs in 2021, like back to back after, you know, the release of Sunset Drive. So everyone was super excited. And I felt like this one was like when his sound kind of changed. Like, mm-hmm. I w- it, f- first of all, great song for the car. Mm-hmm. 
Great roll the windows down. Mm-hmm. I love the content of the song. I feel like lyrically, he really kind of stepped it up and went to the next level. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so yeah, it was my number three. Okay, I like that. All right, what about you? So my number three was Stay. And it was, it's like a very like, I, first of all, I love, I love, Stay. let's talk about this. I love some good dear. album art. Oh, yeah. I love some good album art. And it was very simple. It said, Stay on a post-it and there was a fall leaf. Mm-hmm. And I like that. With a blue background. Yes, it's because pretty. people do a lot these days to get you to like listen to their album. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? The song's good. It'll speak for itself. Yeah. But it's got that, you were just singing it, that catchy little chorus. Mm-hmm. Now I'm begging you to stay here. It's tired, getting kind of late here. You shouldn't be driving anywhere. It doesn't do that. That's a remix. It's also, that was really so slow. <laughs> that was really it's what? Slow. It's yeah, like, it's like stay drives. Here, say it. It's getting kind of late. It's not here. that fast. It shouldn't be driving anywhere. It is not that fast. It is. It's. It's. Slow. It wasn't like stay here. Tired. I was doing the booty Dad, version. R and B version. <laughs> I was doing the R and B show. Okay, <laughs> um, but I like that song. It's very good. I like like the playfulness of like kind of what the lyrics describe. Mm-hmm. First of all, I will say this about Anthony Marie Chula. Mm-hmm. Loves Taylor Smith. He loves does like, love Taylor Smith. We will be at a party. Vibes are high. Everybody's drinking. Lights are going. And he'll be like, should we turn on the Eras tour? And I'm like, I guess. <laughs> Before that, it was, should we turn on Reputation Stadium tour? <laughs> We're like, sure. But I... he pulls a lot of inspiration. Mm-hmm. And his writing's really good. The boy can ride a bridge. Mm-hmm. You want to talk with some people, we don't need a bridge. He writes great bridges. But I love the playfulness and the description of these lyrics. For sure. Of just, um, my favorite line from that song is, our time will go down as my favorite year. I love little like nuances like that. Because mm-hmm. I look back on certain things, I'm like, that was a good year. Yeah. Then I look totally. back on other people and I'm like, ooh, 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 ooh. Not so, ooh. Yeah. So I really like that song. Stay is my number three. Awesome. What was your number two? My number two. Ah, my name's on here. I didn't know he credited us in the thing. Oh, look at that! That's what me song? Raisin. Um, it's called Good. Good. Okay. okay. The reason I love this song so much is because, like, this, like, Anthony and I became really, really good friends in like 2018, 2019. I remember okay. being at his parents' house and him playing this for me on the guitar. And being like, oh, I love this song. <laughs> I love this. Song. This is the one from Sunset Drive that I go back to the most. Yeah. Um, it's just, lyrically, it's really great. His voice sounds so mm-hmm. good on it because mm-hmm. it's called Good. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Rewind the Podcast. If you want to follow us. <laughs> I'm just, I'm kind of low-key and Anthony Chula, like, stand mm-hmm. as a musician. As a person, I give him an 8 out of 10. Trash. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Do not yeah, recommend. This was the first one off this project that I was like, oh, I'm, like, in love with this music. Yeah. So, like, I just, like, remember the moment. And it's, like, a, like a good, like, oh, mm-hmm. sweet memory. Okay. Nice. Okay. Go ahead. Play. Yeah, what about you? <laughs> Mine is you and I, and this is where my fun you, fact you, comes you, in. You, you, I took you the album art for this. Did you? I did. Oh, good. Yes, he was dating this man at this time, and we went up to the roof, and we took pictures. Awkward. And it was on the Polaroid. You didn't have to say that. We can cut it. <laughs> <laughs> and we went and took, we took all these Polaroids. Mm-hmm. I still have all the photos, like, in my phone from yeah. when we took them. But I got to, I got to participate in... Creating art. Yeah, I love yeah. that. You know, my, my own like music career aside. <laughs> okay, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, I love that song. I love the melody. The mm-hmm. you and I. He's just uh, he's got that sweet little spot up there. I love a Does. high vocal. I mean, I love women, and he is not a woman, but he <laughs> sings. He sings high. He, his falsetto is beautiful. Yeah, I can only listen to so much George Ezra. He you know has what I mean? great range. Yeah, um, and he really like takes his time up there, mm-hmm. and I really like it too. That is what she said. <laughs> Melodically, also, that's a go. great song. <laughs> <laughs> it is, um, um, and it's kind of like a slower jam, and I like the distortion. What I was the, trying to do with my other one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I like the distortion of the voices too. When he's like, mm-hmm. you, 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 and I. Yeah, that nice. I wrote Thank on you. my. I wrote on my notes. I love the hook. Yeah. So. Look on be you and I. So let's talk about this. What is your number one song? Okay. 
I y'all, I play this song on repeat. It is like it's become like a comfort song now. You know, you have that song where you're like, I'm gonna listen to that because it makes me feel better. That's Perf- me with espresso. Hello, yes! Sabrina. <laughs> um, it's the perfect summer song. Okay. Um, and it has a feature. Did it's- he just write the song of the summer? I think he just wrote the song of the summer. No, last it's, year. It's been out. <laughs> <laughs> It's called Say So. Okay. Um, it's really simple. Is that the one with the worms and the apple? Yes. Okay. Album art. Love album art. You say oh, it's a snake. Oh, sorry. So we got a stand-in producer so today, our friend Gabe. <laughs> um, but yes, it's called Say So. It is um, has a feature, which he doesn't have any. I think this is the only song with a feature. Mm-hmm. I think he did Treacherous with another one of our friends. Yeah, but, but that's a cover. That's true. It yeah. is a cover. He did not write Treacherous. Trust me, he would be paying for a lot more dinners <laughs> if he wrote Treacherous. <laughs> Um, but I go to this song all the time. It's another great car song. Mm-hmm. Um, Casey's voice sounds great on it as well. Mm-hmm. She, We know her as well. She's a wonderful mm-hmm. singer and writer. She's a gem. Yes. Um, yeah, so what's your number one? <laughs> so I will say that was my alternate, and for this one reason, I think it really shows his songwriting abilities as well mm-hmm. because I think there's people we know, even people like artists mm-hmm. who are really good singers, but you know they're not really yeah. in the coin. Um, and I think it showcases both. And I'm like, you could also be writing for people. Mm-hmm. That's and he does write for people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He wrote a song with me. Mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> Book it if you need a good songwriter. <laughs> but my number one song was actually one you've already said. And it was Good. Good. It's my number one song. It was the song that introduced me to his music. It's so good that somebody said they wanted to remix it. The Camp oh, Romance yeah. remix. I yes. forgot about the remix. Just love. I love the the story of that song, or at least how I interpret it. Oh, tell me how you interpret it. The way I interpret it is it's this song, this love has ended. Mm-hmm. But it's not that they will necessarily fall in love again, but it's like we can be like friends. We can be friendly. We can realize that like this, this, this just wasn't meant to be us. Mm-hmm. And it, when I look back on it, even though there was a lot of good and bad, it was mostly good. And I will reflect on mm-hmm. that. I love that. Yeah. See, I take it a little bit different. Okay. Yeah. Well, how'd you take it? So for Cause me, cause you probably know the T. I- <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, nobody, Get the camera up on the I shoulder. Here we go. What's the real tea? Yeah. No, 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 no. I love that it's that song that's like, now I know what love is supposed to feel like. And like, although it didn't work out, I can walk away being like, this does exist. Mm-hmm. Like, it gives me hope that like, if I found it with this person... I can find it again. Mm -hmm. And I love the like optimism in that. And that's one thing about Anthony that I will say like as a person. Forever an optimist. So optimistic. Like wants to see the best in people. Always sees the best in people. He can go get a beer with the devil and be like, he has some good spots. Yeah. And it's like, no. Yeah. (laughs) But he wants to just find the love in people. Yeah. And I love like seeing that come through through his lyrics. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was why it's one of my favorites. I love that. Yeah. It was, it was a really, uh, I just loved it. Okay. What is your throwaway? I'm going to say Never Say Forever. Right, trash. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Hate it. Throw- <laughs> no, I just <laughs> don't go back to it as often. Okay. I like it, obviously. Mm-hmm. But, like, I just don't find myself listening to it. He's got one really slow one that I don't. It's a ballad on that Sunset Drive that I don't mm-hmm. go back to a lot. But just because I don't want to be sad. <laughs> um, but, like, I love the song. Yeah. But I don't listen to it as much because, like I said, it's. it's you don't it, like to be sad. I don't want to be sad. You like to be pumped up. I do. Mm-hmm. but And I love like never say forever. I just feel like something about it just doesn't get my, my juices flowing. Get your get your uh uh. Yeah, yeah I like yeah. that. Okay. What about you? So I'm gonna come from a songwriting standpoint with mine, okay. but uh, his song "The Victim," I could throw it away. Really? Yeah, yeah. I like the song. What's up? We back to loud and wrong. But oh, are we? Okay. Ahead. Yeah, the victim. Who to throws me- away the victim? That's insane. Well, I'm going to tell you why, and it may seem like uh, maybe too much of a slight critique, but we're critiquing on this podcast, um, but never rude. I know he loves Taylor Smith Mm -hmm. so much, Mm -hmm. and it kind of feels like he, when he went to write it, he was like, I need to write a bad blood. And it just didn't translate for me. I like the song, but it just feels like he was like, oh, I want, I want like a bad blood type song. Okay. I don't correlate those at all, but that, Mm -hmm. Okay. 
See, this is why we can't review our friends. You can be wrong. No. no. I mean, I threw and one away, too. you can be wrong, too. That less often. No. Um, Good song. It's got some bite behind it, but it just was not my favorite. And if I never had to hear it again, I wouldn't. That sounded uglier than it needed to. But you know what I mean? It was our throw away. I love you. It's not about... No, I'm... It's not about him. Who cares? It's oh. about... <laughs> it's about you... Did not that you're being a bad call. Okay, well, then what would you throw away? I already threw mine away. Okay, Never exactly. say forever. So you have your opinion and I have mine. Oh, don't do all I'm this. I'm, like, shocked you picked that one. Why? It's just a good song. It's a really good song. Okay, I love and that I for like, you. And it's the juxta- it's the juxtaposition of for the other you. ones. It's the one that, like, stands out because it sounds so different than the rest. This is mad. I know, but for me, it's not necessarily stand out like, oh, this is different. It's stand out, oh, this doesn't really fit. Oh, okay. That yeah. I'll accept more. Okay. Got to come ready to argue with yeah, Raven if you're going to be on this podcast, okay? <laughs> better reasoning than your others. Yes. All right, cool. Okay. But yes, go check out Anthony Chula. Yes. We'll put his, um, his stuff here. It's right here. Wait, look at it. Pretty. Okay. Pretty. Um, yeah, we love <laughs> him. He's stupid. fantastic. He, Like I said, he writes for other people. Yeah. He's always writing with people and collabing, so reach out to him. Also, all my little Nashville friends, if you watch this, when you're talking about you want good songwriters, here's one that's not going to write about just like trucks and back roads. Okay. Also, um, go check out all of his music on Apple Music and Spotify. And Spotify. If you're a title listener, he's on there. Yeah. Is he really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Go yeah, ahead, when you title. distribute, it goes everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Go he's ahead, on the title. YouTube. He's, on he's got the a music YouTubes. video. He's got a music video. So yeah, go check him out. Go Anthony him out. Chula. I know it looks like Ciula, but it's Chula. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and I will always, and we always want to make the call. If you're an artist and you want to submit your music, you can submit your music to that rewind podcast at gmail.com. Just because you send it does not mean we are going to review it. We have to like it and you have to have at least four songs so we can have a top three and a throwaway. Yeah. Or you but, can DM us. Yeah. If it's easier. DM us. Unless or we don't do it. if you know someone and you're like, if you're a listener and you're like, oh my God, my homeboy Jimmy, really, he be getting down with yes. those ones and twos. We and the love a nomination. Yeah. Nominate your friends. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> this has been a pleasure. You can see yourself out. <laughs> All right. Moving on along. Moving on along. Okay. Don't put it out if you don't want me to Why touch it. Why are you it. all the way over here? Over what? I went like this. You know, out more, more. It and was so not I, that close. Yes, it was. It Roll the tape back. It wasn't. Exactly. It wasn't. Mm-mm. I went like this. That was the exact. And don't know about it whole hand. Moving on along. Moving on along. Have you ever been in a cult? Okay, I know. <laughs> I know that's a perfect lead-in <laughs> question, but having watched a few of these things and knowing some of the things I did growing up, I was like, you know what? I might need to do a deeper review on some things. <laughs> Me too. Girl. That's why I asked, because I'm like, mm, uh, I've been in some cult-like situations. I, I think I've been in some moments where I'm like, but I feel like when those moments were happening, I was like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. I would I would not be like, this is wrong. But I was like, like, in my spirit, I have good discernment. In my spirit, I was like, mm, I don't know. And later, I was proved to be right. Right. So, so yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wasn't in a cult. No, because I'm not in it anymore. No, cults don't mean you can't leave. That's Does true. It? A lot of people don't believe they can, though. Yeah. Well, let's talk about it. Okay. So, on the Netflix, there's mm-hmm. a new documentary called Dancing with the Devil mm-hmm. that highlights a production company slash church. So, this... Re- this company is called 7M, mm-hmm. and the church is called Shekinah. Real quick. I'm actually, like, so ready to talk about this. You don't even know. So I hope you're, like, ready oh, for no, it. Oh, no, I'm ready. Okay, sounds good. Keep going. Okay. Um, the production company is called 7M. The church is called Shekinah. It's run by a man named Robert Shin. Mm-hmm. And basically, he had a church in the 90s mm-hmm. that was more focused toward Korean, people of Korean cult- culture. That church fell apart mostly mm-hmm. and then because he was crazy because he's crazy um his son is a content creator per, like videographer person and started engaging with all of these dancers in la mm-hmm. and this 
slowly becomes this predatory this Bible study from hell. Literally, where they're taking their money and but they're providing them with like housing and sh- like cars and stuff, but then taking all their money, but then wrapping it up into this religious ideology that is wildly false. Whack a doodle. Whack a doodle. As Lisa Renner would say, it's sure. whack a doodle time. Okay, let's break it up into. Want to break it up into episodes? Uh, you took the words right out of my mouth. Okay, literally, I want to break it down into episodes because the first episode, and I have notes, and I know we're supposed to be like, I can recall all this at the drop of a hat. Look, I took a fall at work this week, so. He says, he fell one more time. I'm, I'm gonna I, push him down. I'm That's gonna, gonna be his uh, next fall. L- listen, if you want to donate, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, cash out. the first thing I want to get out there mm-hmm. before we get in deep to this concrete. Fine as hell. Okay. okay. <laughs> the whole ep- the whole three Magician, episodes. You're shot I was at like concrete I, out the blue. Hello. Yes, I was like this was devastating mm-hmm. to watch. But I'll, every time they went back to him in his little bucket hat, I was like, oh, hey, concrete. <laughs> okay. So that is what I want to say first and foremost. The most important thing. Yeah. Second thing. This setup was very interesting. I liked it because I knew where we were going to go with it. Um. I will be honest, at first, whenever any, whenever I watch any kind of documentary about like, oh, I'm an online famous person, and they're always so happy in the interview, I'm like, what's about to happen? Mm-hmm. Because you can turn that off and on real quick. Mm-hmm. So uh, that was my first thing. I liked the way that it was shot in the way that you would... Be- it was unsettling to say the least. Mm-hmm. Like the dance part of it is so bizarre. Oh, so yeah. like you would be talking about something so intense. Like they'd be like having some some discourse about yeah. scripture. And then the next clip would be somebody being like five, six, seven, eight, and, and one, it would and be two, like three, and you're like This will be an everlasting. And you're like, What <laughs> yes. is happening? Yeah. But that is their reality. Like, like they would built say, into the chaos. Of yeah, it. like they were like during the day, we'd just be kid, like all these like young adults living in a house filming content. But then on the back end, it's like all of this like very shady. Mm-hmm. It's the appearance versus the reality. Tea. And that is what social media is. Literally. And the fact that it's happening in plain sight. Oh, yeah. Continue. That that was one of the things that immediately got off with me right away. But I, I almost want to go like deeper into it because I love the way they would pull into like you said the focus of Mm -hmm. like oh we're dancing it's fun and I remember a lot of those videos because I remember when they first showed up on my For You page all those years ago I was like these are very crisp these are very clean Mm -hmm. I remember they taught like how to how they do the follow shot where it always looks like it's moving like Mm -hmm. very even little like intricate things like that and I did not even realize this was a part of some like like Christian religious movement. I don't think movement. most people do. I don't think did. they did either. And the fact that this this Robert guy is basically holding a church, finding talented people in his Bible study. They weren't even at the church at that time. And saying, huh, I can turn a dollar from you. To me, I know people can be in a pastoral leadership position and have great business savvy. Yeah. But that's strike one for me. Oh. I'm just going to say it. Hmm. It's giving like Joe Simpson. It at some point there's always like a I'm gonna sell you down the river for the cash. That wasn't strike one for me. Okay. Because that is a boundary. I, I am a firm believer that just because you are a Christian or a pastor doesn't mean that you should be unable to make other sources of income. Yeah. I, where I think the issue that comes for me mm-hmm. is that it was predatory mm-hmm. and that it wasn't like, hey, come to the church. It was, hey, come to my church. Um, I'm going to take a 20% management fee. Then I'm going to ask for 10% for tithe. Then I'm going to ask for 10% of offering, which is not supposed to be like a number. An offering is at your own discretion. If you want to give a dollar. Yeah, but tithing is typically 10%. Tithe means a tenth. And that's a very normal... That's what tithe means. The root. I don't think I ever connected. Yeah. Tithe Slay. means a tenth. Um, so like Grew that's up in a, church my whole life. <laughs> It's a very normal, um, normal, you know, Christian principle that people yeah. give ten percent of their income. Mm-hmm. Okay, but now we're at thirty percent because I've already you've already taken twenty percent off the top for mm-hmm. management. Now you've taken ten percent as a tithe. Mm-hmm. Now you're requiring a ten percent as an offering, which to a, the man of God. No, that's separate. Oh, okay, that's okay. his own thing. Oh no, hell no. A ten percent tithe, a ten percent <laughs> offering. So now you're at forty percent, and then they made up another category called the man of God. Mm-hmm. Which is another ten 
percent. So at that point, you've taken fifty percent, mm-hmm. and that's and no, the government hasn't shown up yet. The government hasn't shown up. You haven't paid your bills, anything like that. But also, I, I heard about this on another podcast. We both like the the twenty percent is can be kind of yeah. standard. But they were saying, especially in non unionized yeah. work, like. It's, it's yeah. no, it's twenty percent is not crazy as a management fee. It's not, especially when you're starting out and they know like they're essentially taking a risk mm-hmm. on you. Um, but yeah, you're right. When they said the government hasn't even, when you said the government hasn't even shown up yet, I'm like, that's so true. And they live, and it's in LA, so yeah. they're taking thirty percent off top taxes on everything. So that's eighty percent of your money that's just poof, yeah, gone. And then they had the capability of going into your bank account and moving your funds around. Oh, if somebody ever said, let me control your bank account and you are not my business manager. Then I don't know what you, my dad would be trying to control my bank account. I sent him to mind his business. Exactly. I remember when we were at Belmont learning about the music industry, a lot of uh, music people, especially the reason they are so broke is because they sign over power of attorney to people. And they're like, oh, let me, let me sign your check. You're on the road. You're blah, 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 blah. Even in that predatory environment. And then you tie in, you need to let me do this because God told me to. And if you don't want to go to hell, first of all. That's a red flag. So let's talk about episode one in, the refer- in my first red flag. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. When the young man, I can't remember his name, and he says, you know, he's friends with Isaiah, which was Robert's son. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know, talking to him about, you know, I want to get back in church. And then Robert was like, you know, you'll go to hell. Mm-hmm. If anybody leads with hell, out red flag, out. Just so we're all clear, mm-hmm. that is that should not be the selling point mm-hmm. <laughs> of of your faith is that you're gonna go to hell. That's an immediate red flag that like maybe there's a situation happening here that isn't necessarily the best Mm -hmm. because what they're trying to do is scare you into being a member of their church yeah another red flag is when people claim to have the only source source to to salvation or that you have to go through them Mm -hmm. to get salvation that is a red flag and see watching it i was like i didn't have popcorn but that's where i would have thrown up the bucket man like i'm done because even in my, like we said, in my growing up and just the stuff I witnessed, if somebody had ever said, now, for people who may be watching and don't know anything about Christianity, when you, like, get saved, you were essentially, like, believing in that Jesus died on the cross and rose again, mm-hmm. and that through him you can have salvation. When somebody, and that's, you, that's it. Mm-hmm. And when people are like, but also you need to believe me. And I'm like, you're in a baggy suit that don't even fit you right. And you think you're the uh, like the addendum to the savior of the world? Eat my ass. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Even back in the day, I would have responded like yeah. that. We're not doing that. And so that was the first red flag. And that's where I'm not victim blaming. Uh, oh, I'm about to. We're say, gonna do it. okay. We, that's I'm not victim blaming. I'm like, how do you make that make sense in your mind? There are things, like I said, when I was growing up, I was like, huh. But there are certain things that I'm like, this is the circus. Yeah, this is Barnum and Bailey's circus. It's giving Barnum and Bailey's. Yes, for sure. Absolutely. I agree. At some point, there has to be a personal responsibility, mm-hmm. and we haven't gotten there yet. But yeah. this man. Basically, on episode one, mm-hmm. when we're talking about Miranda, which the, the story is centered around a family, and it's two sisters, Melanie and Miranda. Yes. And they're the um, Wilking sisters. Okay. And they had a TikTok where they would do dances together. Mm-hmm. Um, and the whole basically premise is that this family is trying to get Miranda back because now she's become a member of Shekinah. Yeah. Um, so the dad tells this really devastating story about, you know, uh, his wife's uh, father died and Miranda made up a story about having COVID and not being able to come to the funeral. Mm-hmm. And they went to her and they were like, what is wrong with you? Like you, you, you should be here. Like you're going to regret this. Like this is like, like this, their second dad basically. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'm not coming. And, and then she goes, well, I'll need to, I'll need to think about it and figure it out. And they're like, who do you have to ask? Yeah. Like, who has to give you permission? Mm-hmm. And she says, I need to ask someone who's closer to God than you are. First of all, as a parent, that would have pissed me I off. I was like, oh. And he was like, we lost her. He was like, that's when I knew we lost her. Yeah. Like, the fact that she felt like she didn't have the authority over mm-hmm. her own. The best part about being a Christian, not the best, but like one of the best, is that 
God gives you the authority over your own self to make your own decisions. T. That is a part of the freedom of being a part of this faith. And they're not really, they kind of sometimes skirt around that. But yeah, yeah, but that is the thing. It's like you still get to choose mm -hmm. what you do and how you live and how you move. That is a choice that you get to make. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that she felt like she had no power to even be able to say, I'm going to go to my grandpa's funeral mm -hmm. is insane. And there has to be a level of personal responsibility to that. Yep. And as I say, I also don't want to victim blame. I do think that when you're young and you're impressionable, yep. it's easy to get that way. And they're the perfect prey. They're poor. They're moved, they moved to L.A. without family and friends. Yep. They're really passionate about wanting to seek, like, stardom in, in this way. Yeah. They're dangling this carrot over them. As content creators, you know better than me. But it is hard mm -hmm. to, like, me come up with topics, produce it, record it, edit it, post it. Oh, yeah. All these things. And for them to come in and be like, we'll do all that for you. All you have to do Raven is would have been in that cult like that. Baby, they had me and you don't got to edit. You just show up and chit chat. Yeah. <laughs> she would have been like, okay. Where I sign it? Listen to the old hits. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they dangled this carrot in front of them and it was like, this is great. Yeah. They give me a place to live. They, I have cars and I have friends and community. Mm -hmm. And we all live in this house together. We just five, six, seven, eight all day. This is great. But see, once again, my red flag would have gone up when they'd be like, you're just going to need to sign all your checks over to that, us. See, and that's what they would have lost me. Yeah. They would have lost me at that 80%. <laughs> yeah, literally. Who? I, I Who just pay a man to God? <laughs> not Raven Olivier Dawson. I know she not. Uh -uh. No. Absolutely not. No. And that's one of the things, too, is like, well, even when I moved to Nashville for a while, I was going to a church that it was giving cult at uh, when now when I look back on it. Oh. And it was, but it was very catered towards artists and people who travel and blah, blah, blah. And they were always like, your moment's coming and blah, blah, blah. And I think sometimes I would end up going to that church because it was like, oh, like, I, I, do you I know what I'm trying to say? Someone to like believe in me. Yeah, and it's it's, it's one of those. It's a lot of rejection. It's a lot of rejection. It's a lot of that, and then but like also you. This is I don't want to get like this is going to be a two hour podcast if I just keep going, but it's just you see the pockets, and I felt like watching this literal pockets. You see the pockets of like. God's going to do this for you. It's going to be great. It's blah, blah, blah. And here's our church service. We're going to do this camp. We're going to do this money thing. We're going to release this. We're going to, and I get that you can make streams of income as a church. Again, something in my spirit was like, there's something going mm -hmm. on here. Watching the way they would treat regular civilians versus when celebrities would come mm -hmm. versus when certain people, and it, those things. Mm -hmm. When you, you don't did, have opinions about that too. I know you have opinions on that, but it's like when when you say you're going to volunteer, but you're sick and they're like, oh, well, you can still do it. So, like, we need you for parking. And, no, you don't. No, you don't. I'm sick. Yeah. Like that kind of thing. Those were all the red flags for me. All of that to say, we basically watch Miranda go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs because she's getting a little bit of internet fame. Well, also, though, I think for her, I can't speak for her, it was, I met this guy. Mm -hmm. I really like him. These are his people. Mm -hmm. We know we know a lot of girls who will denounce their mama, daddy, religion, and everything else for a man. Mm -hmm. Stand up, y'all. You know who you are. Stand up! Um, they act like they're... You have lost your mind. They act like their whole identity gets wrapped up in this person mm -hmm. and they lose their own brain cells, child. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. I think it's mixed in with all the other factors where she was like, this is more important to me at this time. Yeah. Now, the other little girl who was friends with Miranda while she was in the cult as well would say that Miranda would cry for her family and want to be with her parents. Yeah, and exactly. have all of these big feelings, but when it came down to it, she was going to do what she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't remember if this is episode one or two, but when I would have been through with Miranda is that when they... When she showed up to her mom and daddy, and filming the live, filming the live, caught hands. I can tell you, Bad right Girls now, Club, World Star, Cassandra, and Curtis Dawson would have ripped every single one of these little braids out my head mm -hmm. on camera. Cause my parents, their whole thing is we gonna show out wherever you showed out in. Mm -hmm. Growing up, when I would get spanked in the grocery store for acting a plum fool, mm -hmm. I'd be like, I'm so embarrassed. I'd be like, that's what you showed out at. Mm -hmm. If you show out at Walmart, you in your butt. Spanked at Walmart. Tea. So they would have had me in the mix mm -hmm. had I shown up there 
and tried to put them on front street. Mm -hmm. That is wildly disrespectful. And this is how you know Robert Shen is not of God. Because one of the Ten Commandments is honor thy mother and father. And how are you going to honor your parents by trying to embarrass them on the enemy? On the TikTok, they're like, since they want to put everything out on my world, blah, blah, blah. I really, I would have, uh, who, I would have told Robert Keeper. Yeah. She better be like, she ain't my child. You can have her. Mm -hmm. Disrespectful. Yeah, that is one of the things that really, I, I was like, you're a see you next Tuesday. That was wildly inappropriate. I said, you want to do all that? And there, they said it's, you know, they said she was becoming like a wall, like mm-hmm. she was glassed over. This is also something I want to hit on too, because she's wrapped up in this. She said she had the boy. She mm-hmm. was, maybe she felt like she was a part of something mm-hmm. for once. Those are feelings that happen when you're in a cult. Sometimes you can get rid of a lot of baggage if you can just look in the mirror and say, I want to be famous. Yep. I want people to know my name. I want to go to the grocery store and get stopped by 100,000 people. I want to go on world tours. If you can admit that to yourself, sometimes what it does is it can And you can be like jolt you. Is that really my priority right now? Is fame? Literally. Because that's a big part of this too. On yes. top of the like carrot of dangling, it's like I can make you famous. Mm-hmm. I can make you known. I can do and that's another red flag because another best part of about being a Christian is feeling known. Mm-hmm. Because if God knows you and recognizes you and you have a relationship with him, there's a knowingness yeah. in that. Mm-hmm. That it don't matter if everybody on the planet knows your name. Mm-hmm. Red flag team. number two. And that was the thing I thought was hard about some of these people. <laughs> that was the thing I thought that was interesting watching. I was like, I wonder how many of these people, if they just looked in the mirror and said, I want to be famous. Because apparently Robert Shin knows he wants to be, mm-hmm. but is pretending like he's doing the, the Lord's work. Exactly. Making these little films. Whenever they're like, it was L.A., I went to a church. I was like, oh, here we go. And, see, and that's <laughs> the thing, too, though. It makes me sad for... That was the part about episode one and then we can wrap up and move on. Uh, is that... The the seed of all of this with these kids, they all said the same thing. Mm-hmm. I missed going to church. Yeah, I missed having that community. I felt like my faith, like I wasn't making it a priority. And the fact that he sought that out in them, and these mm-hmm. are kids who knew God and loved God and wanted, yeah. and like a lot of what they were doing was like expression in their way of like honoring God through their yeah. talent. And for him to pray on that like that, that's messed up. Hell, okay. sorry. Whoa, all right. So, so, so with these people who do that, yeah. I'm like, it's we've got like Hitler and oh. all these ho- horrible <laughs> people, and then you are second in line. Oh gosh, <laughs> doing things in the name of God, and I'll stand on yeah, that. I'll stand bad. on business. It's bad. Okay, it's really bad. Second episode. Yeah. Well, I do want to do one more. Okay. Because I know we got to move on. There was a light hint that the the husband of Miranda he was like, uh, no, it's because they're racist. That pissed me off talk about it i'll say this b dash know them people better than me because i ain't never met them folks that's t they very well he very well could have gotten that feeling of like man they low-key kind of racist uh but uh M- melanie married a black dude too so it's just negroes all around through there <laughs> so i don't know if they ain't got a problem with the first negro why they gonna have a problem with the second <laughs> i don't that ain't my business what i will say though is the racial aspect of this I, w- I was like Kev on stage. You listen to that podcast. Mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting to see us sitting there. But you <laughs> will be in a cult. <laughs> in a minute. Also, though, as far as b is, con- is concerned, it felt like a Robert Shin counter mm-hmm. to, like, they want to act like, like, to give them a reason to not be with Miranda. Mm-hmm. I don't... it. From how they seem on TV and the fact that their second daughter also is married to a black man or a man of color, uh, he, he blackish. They were at the wedding. They did all the things. I, I don't, it just, one plus one ain't, is two and it was given one plus one is three. Because usually, well, I know this in gay world, it's like if you don't support, you're not going. Yeah. You're not doing anything. And a lot of people. I had a friend who married a black guy. And the dad would not walk her down the aisle. Yeah, and a lot of people, too, are just, you know, 2024 racists, where they're like, you and me friends, well, but you can't marry none of them. Like, that kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. So it's like, and some of them, every, everybody's racism has levels, okay? T. And so I don't know at what level these people are on that spectrum, if at all. 
it does. It wasn't giving authentic. Yeah. It was giving giving Uno reverse. <laughs> Y'all don't like me, and I don't like you. Yeah. And it's like, well, they're racist, and it's like, okay. Yeah. Calm, calm down. That's the tea. So episode two, we get introduced to the sisters who were in the Shekinah OG Melody blueprint. Melody and Lee. We and had Melanie it? Lee. And Priscilla. And Priscilla. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we were introduced to them. We're introduced to their story about how they were in, um, how they immigrated from Korea. Mm-hmm. And they joined this church. They were mm-hmm. in this church. They got very involved. You're kind of seeing some of the original shakeup of how he isolates people, gets mm-hmm. them. And I think it's also something to note that they were children, literal children. Literal. Minors. And and yeah, and they were, did not have adult supervision. No. Their mother had a gambling problem. Their father was not present. They were basically raising each other. Mm -hmm. And so, again, predatory in that these kids are coming to these adults Mm -hmm. and being brainwashed essentially literally because there was nobody there was no guiding light for them to be like that's weird yeah they got to the point where they moved into these people's houses yeah i don't i don't want to not pay my bills that bad I, and that's and for them they're children that's understood i'm talking more about the dancer side mm-hmm. of it too i no but the, he was charging them rent that's the crazier part they were paying like twenty two hundred dollars a month for rooms in these houses the part that really just took it over the edge for me was that they were so Robert owned all of these businesses, real estate business, I think like a coffee shop mm-hmm. or like a juice bar, whatever. And all of the congregation worked mm-hmm. in these establishments and basically didn't have none of their own money. No. They were given a hundred dollars a week. Yeah. Working this in girl, LA. This girl says she worked Monday to Saturday, 10 hour days. Nope. And was bringing home a hundred dollars a week. Nope. And and the corruption in that, like, you never even saw your money mm-hmm. because there was someone like literally going into your account and moving money around is insanity. Oh, the fact that they all have like handlers at this church. She's like, sign over your checks. This is also where we see it go deep. That's I think this is maybe the actual episode where we learn about like the like the man of God fee. And mm-hmm. this is where they were saying, like, oh, like you have an extra step to salvation. You listen to you listen to Robert. Mm-hmm. I would have been like. Mm-hmm. No, I don't. But I think it's Melanie Lee who describes it when she said she like saw him what looked like a perform a miracle on her sister with the mm-hmm. rash. That's where it's like bought in, and those mind games can get pretty. Yeah. Like I said, growing up in the church, and also they were children. Children. Again, these are Your not brain adults. is being formed. Yeah. So I can see. I mean, like I said, I grew up in those moments. Yeah. Where you're you're just like, oh yeah, like this is an authority figure. Mm-hmm. I have to obey them and. As someone who truly wants to please God, you will go around the way. Mm-hmm. So this episode's more so pissing me off because of how this guy's doing it. The first episode, Miranda was pissing me off. Mm-hmm. This episode, I'm getting pissed off at that guy. The, for some reason, this hit me sideways. Halfway through the second episode, we find out that they're chatting with Miranda. This whole episode, the first episode was like, we'll never see her again. I was like, damn, that sucks. The second episode, she's coming home for Christmas. She's doing all this stuff. And I was like, what? What? And it almost made me jump out. Really? Yeah, because... Oh, it made perfect sense to me. Well, because when when he explained the whole, like, you go to these people, but you give them nothing, it made sense. But again, maybe it was like how you said with the parents, if they were on live, Mm -hmm. if she was like, I'm going to come home, but you don't get to talk A, B, C, D. What? I thought this was another red flag, red flag. Robert initially was like... You have to die to yourself. That's what's on episode one that we didn't talk about. Yeah. The idea of dying to yourself, which is a Christian fundamental in some ways, but he perverted it in a way that it's not meant biblically. Yeah. He was saying, like, die to yourself, meaning, like, get rid of all the things that are of you Mm -hmm. so that you can, because those things will be resurrected in the afterlife. Mm -hmm. Um. And so, in their minds, that's the original teaching, right? This Mm -hmm. die to yourself teaching. Red flag, red flag. Another great thing about God is he's the same Mm -hmm. then, now, and in the future. Maybe we should start a a deconstruction podcast, too. (laughs) Because, like, he he doesn't change. That's Mm -mm. the comfort, right, part? If on Monday you want me to die to myself and never talk to me, uh, talk to my family again, but then on Thursday you're telling me to go home for Thanksgiving, 
red flag. Something's up. Something's up. That's not how this works. And so the appearance piece of this whole thing, Mm -hmm. where it is very social media driven and it is very press driven, I I see the thinking behind go home and play nice. Mm -hmm. And as a parent and as a family member, and like they said to the people on the phone when they called the hotline and they said, make sure you're a safe space for her. Mm -hmm. Make sure you keep the lines of communication open for her because the moment she realizes that this is not where she wants to be, she needs to feel like she can call you. Yeah. So of course they're going to be like, we'll take whatever. Yeah. Come home for Christmas. I won't say a thing. Like just to see you and be able, like that's a parent's nightmare. Mm -hmm. And these parents like, um, what was the baby's name? Reno's parents. I was just like heartbroken for them too. It's like all they want is some line of communication. Mm -hmm. So like I see how it benefits both sides that they would play nice at these events. Yeah, the the dying to yourself thing when they were when if it say leave your family, I that that yeah, that would have been a red flag. And that's when concrete was like when he told me I had to die to my son. You're not gonna tell me who I'm cutting out. Mm -hmm. You're just not. Yeah. Whoo! It, I'm getting mad thinking about it again. It's bad. And the fact that, like I said, and then we get into the sexual abuse mm-hmm. and the corruption of it all. Mm-hmm. All when, these rich, powerful men always want to get massaged. Grow the fuck up. Literally, when he asked Priscilla, I'm pretty sure it was Priscilla, to sleep with another church member, mm-hmm. I was like, so not only are you trying to pit me out for yourself. You're trying to get off on it. You're trying to pit me out to other people? Yeah. In con- the congregation? And and his excuse, none of these things make sense. His excuse was, in the Bible, they had concubines. I can have concubines. That was his excuse, right? Why are you trying to get me to sleep with Jim? Yeah. Jim can have concubines too. Everybody can have concubines? Yeah, there ain't nothing in the Bible about being a cuck. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Watching, listening to him preach, I'm like, I see how he laid this blueprint out. He went to a black church once or twice <laughs> and was like, I can do this. Started getting the financial plan And together. then built this plan around it because it's very charismatic. Also, when they would play those audio clips and like he would be like, uh, uh, F the people who think we can't also be famous or whatever he was saying. That, amen, amen, amen. I was like, shut up. Uh, hallelujah. Go hallelujah. find your own identity. It was weird. It was weird. Yeah. Okay, now episode three. Episode three. Is when it's like the takedown, but it felt very anticlimactic in episode three. Episode three, three, when they're starting doing a stakeout with walkie-talkies, I was like, what am I watching? What are we doing? I'm sorry. All that to serve him papers. We're not, this isn't. We're not doing to catch a predator. I mean, we are. No, but my thing is, why are we acting like he's so famous? That you can't approach him. That you can't approach him. He was at a Korean restaurant. What, what am I watching? Like, also, I'm, we're starting to lose the plot. Other than the sexual assault, you can't go to jail for being a cult leader. No. It's not a crime. Especially because they're adults. These and are they ad- say that so much. These are adults making adult decisions. They're deciding to give their power and their resources away to this mm-hmm. man based off of a belief system. That is not against the law. No. So, like, what are you going to get him and for? And that Rolling Stone lady, she was explaining all that, but in a way, she was kind of gagging us. Yeah, like... She was just like... This, this can go to court, but it's not really going to hold up. Yeah, we were watching it with friends, or I was watching it with friends. I watched it alone. And they were like, one of our friends was like, why, why can't they just go pick him up and go to jail? I'm like, he hasn't technically done anything. If you're going by the actual law. Like, he hasn't. Like, you can't get mad at him because people choose to follow him because they don't got no good walk around sense. Literally. Like, that's not against the law. Yeah. So, like, what is there to, other than, like I said, the sexual assault, if there is proof of that, then yes, they can get him on that. But this other stuff, they're giving their money away. Yeah. Yeah. So, Gabe just told us, our uh, stand-in producer was saying that Shin filed a um, defamation of character Mm -hmm. And then they countered with the sexual assault charges. Mm -hmm. But no criminal charges have been filed. There is a trial set for July of 2025, but there's no criminal charges because they don't have anything to stand on. Also, too, I don't think his case will win either because once you are a, even if it's that small, once you're like a public Mm -hmm. figure, it's very hard to say defamation. Yeah. So, especially because like, you're doing that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what do you always say? Not everybody's going to tell the same lie. No. And it's okay. And I'll end it with like overall, the people I feel for the most are the family members, mm-hmm. like Reno's parents, um, 
Melanina, Mom and Daddy, mm-hmm. all these people who feel like they've lost a child mm-hmm. that is devastating and they're so helpless because they're when you have adult children, there's nothing you can you can't lock her up in a room and tell her no. she can't go anywhere. This is a married woman who like went off and married this guy, didn't even invite them. Like it seems like per social media where we are now, mm-hmm. they still communicate with her. She comes to big events. She went to uh, Miranda went to Melanie's wedding. She meets friends secretly and cries about how much she misses them, but pretends like she's fine. Yeah, like it seems like they have a communication, but as of now, she is still a member of Shekinah. She is still holding her family at arm's length. And all of the people who were members are still members. And there's nothing that anyone can do at this point until they decide for themselves that they don't longer want to be taken advantage of and leave. And I think that's we've talked about it, too, the part that goes into personal responsibility. You you feel bad for these people. I, like you said, I feel bad for the families. Mm-hmm. The mom, she's sending her pictures of her son, and I get that she's like, I want to be a part of this. The part That's the part that makes me sad. Mm-hmm. The part that pisses me off is Robert Shin, but also the way some of these kids are acting. Um, and we say, we're say we also saying kids, and 20s are kids mm-hmm. still. I mean, we're both in our 30s now. Mm-hmm. We realize our brains were not fully formed. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, too, I'm like, y'all are, you're doing a lot. And it, it, whether you want to belong or be famous or whatever, whatever. You, sometimes you feel like it. you can't leave. Mm-hmm. You know, the first two episodes felt really like packed in. This is ready to go, and I feel like they just did not know how to end it. They did it when they did the invest. Also, when it, it turned into Real Housewives at one point, where the two sisters are sitting there having tea. Oh, I thought it was one of my favorite scenes. I, it became. Ooh, oh my gosh, that no, was such a good scene. Here's the thing: that when it first started. I was like, this is giving real housewives. We're having tea. You didn't say hi to my friend at the birthday party. I was like, what are we doing? And then when she came in with, this is the first time I am finding myself, and you want to talk about why I was late to your party on based on an expectation. That's not what she said. That's why. That's when I turned. But at first, I was like, are we doing real housewives? She said, I try my hardest not to kill myself every day. And you're asking me why I can't come to your child's birthday party? Gagged her. I was like... Ate her up. Honestly, that was the most real, like, moment of the event for me. Like, as a person who's like... Because it's it's this idea that, like, once they're out, they'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the moment that I was like, the work starts with getting them out of this thing. Mm -hmm. Because this woman, 23 years removed, is still listening to his sermons. Yeah. Remember when she served him, she said, I feel bad. That she's going to hell because she is not a member of his church. That's so sad. And like her being able to process that and communicate that to her sister in a way of her sister's like, just be normal. And she's like, I can't. I don't know what normal is. about my life has been normal for 20 years and you want me to play this game and like, I can't. I was like, this is, this, this is, this is it. Also the part where she met with her dad, I was like, that didn't make a lot of sense to me. I liked that part too. I mean, she's just, again, not victim blaming. It's just watching this play out. There's the sister well, thing. Well, no, I do blame the dad. Because had there been adult supervision in their house, they wouldn't have been off at this church 24-7. Well, uh, but that's my thing is it's like, it just felt very they like were, random in the show. Really? She was just like, don't touch me. I'm mad at you. And I'm just like, did we really need this? Like, oh, yeah. can we not talk about it? I thought that she held herself so well. And did not let him off the hook. No, but that's what I'm saying. Because is it that is did not feel fault. like a camera conversation to me. It felt like we need stuff to fill out this episode. I think the point of the episode was to show the reforming of someone. Like this whole time, we're trying to get these people out of this cult, mm-hmm. right? Now we're showing the aftermath yeah. of what happens when you leave this organized religion that that now you realize is a cult. Yeah. So that means having difficult conversations with your family members. That means re-unpacking and reevaluating how you got into this situation and trying to form a life after. Mm-hmm. So for me, in that framework, it didn't seem random to me. It would have been so easy for her to kind of crumble in that moment and give him an out, mm-hmm. especially culturally. Mm-hmm. That like stoic, that like you- I didn't do, it. and she and she really held his feet to the fire because where the f- were you mm-hmm. when your little kids 14 15 are running around here living at other people's houses mm-hmm. and it's like of course they're the they were the perfect prey 
for something like this because there was no adult supervision. Somebody got to be held accountable, and it ain't Melanie and it ain't Priscilla. Where was your mom and daddy? Mm -hmm. More grace towards them. A one hundred percent. Just to wrap it up, you know, our prayers go out to you know the Wilkins family and every and uh, Reno people his family and everybody who's affected by this. Um, at this point, you probably don't have to watch it because we didn't give you the play-by-play, episode-by-episode. Literally, all we did, well, basically all we need to show you is just pictures. Seriously, it? but I do. I would encourage you to watch it. And like, I mean, another thing I was like, how do we help? Don't don't follow that account. That's good. That's it. Live or die. If that, if that Do not follow that account. Unfollow a Miranda. Follow Melanie. Yeah. Unfollow Miranda. Unfollow anyone related to the 7M organization. Because um, when that money disappears, he'll probably hear something else from God real exactly. quick. Exactly. And when those followers start to dip and they're and it's not, you can't, and they're not getting brand deals, I think that's going to be their best bet to come home because mm-hmm. I think he will dispose of them from there. Because oh. there won't be anything left for him to I mean, th- at that point, they have no more use. Yeah. So I guess that's the way that we can we can help. Yeah, literally. Don't follow those people. Don't watch the videos. Magodaly. And fight them. No. <laughs> if you live in L.A., their address is. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. All right. Um, that was fun. I really enjoyed it. That was good. Like, like just like. I don't know if that was fun no, for it me, wasn't, it, but no, it was good. <laughs> the content wasn't fun, but I, I love a good, like, let's dissect. Yeah. Yeah. We love a dissection. All we needed was our glass of black box wine. I know. <laughs> we should have poured a glass for this. I know. Well, no, I would have been running on real long. But thank you so much for watching this episode of Rewind the Podcast. We hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to listen to other episodes of Rewind the Podcast, you can listen on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you listen to podcasts. I'm not going to tell you what you like because you already know because you are a fully grown adult. People. Yeah, don't do that. All of that to say, if you want to watch the podcast and see our beautiful faces, you can watch us on the YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, comment, and sign up for alerts so you know when we're releasing new content because we do have some fun extra stuff. With all that being said, Raven. Magodaly. Hi, thank you so much for watching. It's been so great to see all of you again. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at I am. Raven Dawson. You act like you came out from a desert journey or something. It's been <laughs> I a week. To give a little energy. I love that. Energy. I'm Blake. You can follow me anywhere. There's an online mo- social media presence at Blake Rackley. I, that, the energy went woo. <laughs> you know what? We'll see you next week. Love you. Bye. Ya, bye. Don't join a cult. Yeah.